What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Vikings. Season 5, episode 5. This one is called The Prisoner. Okay. Yep. Coming off of a very interesting episode with a no type of cliffhanger. Yes. Because we've got Aethel Wolf and we've got Bishop Hedman. They get into York. They go to attack. They go do their thing. They realize Nobody no one's there. there. They open up the church or what we think is a church and nothing. Just a bunch of rats, a couple horses. But Hedman kind of noticed like, why are the, why are the rodents above ground? Hmm, why is that, sir? Don't know. Don't know. I'm gonna assume Ivar, who had gotten some intel somehow about the idea that they figured that they were gonna starve them out and burn the dead bodies. I mean, it makes so, sense when the hunting parties don't come back. Yeah, so either someone fed him the information or he was able, he's just smart enough to figure it out. I feel like um, he's good. He figured out some information though, so. He's been really good with this stuff. Like he said in the episode, he's not. He's a cripple. He's not an idiot. Like he's not. He's not stupid. Just yeah, because he's never crazy. underestimate Ivar. Yeah, just because he's Got crazy it. and he just <laughs> screams out of control and just is an absolute madman psychopath, dude. He still got it working up here. Like he's he's still very smart. So I, I'm very interested to see what the actual strategy is and what the plan is. Well, Sv obviously they're underground. Yes, but so Sv Switzer was like worried that he was regretting his decision well he friggin he's like wonder. i'm nobody's dog and it's like dude you just set him up to just fucking bark at you like yeah, what do you head. what do you think ivar was he's gonna he's just gonna mock you yeah like well, what was what do you think his response is gonna be he's like oh yeah you're right like i'm not gonna mess like that's not ivar and like you could tell he was he's just went ruff, ruff. and he like held in the laugh so hard but he just couldn't that was because, really dick but yeah. like yeah I just, I, I hope... He's definitely questioning his decision. Yeah. But Uba's like, oh, he's an enemy of mine too now, so it's like, fuck! But he has no idea that, that Spitzer, it's like, uh, how, uh, maybe I shouldn't have got off the boat. At this point, how much does it matter? It doesn't. Because his initial reaction was to not go with him. Yeah. Like, he decided to stay back. Like, is that automatic? Like, fuck you, we're enemies and I'm gonna kill you type of shit? Or, I, I could see Uba being like, yeah, you made a bad decision. I forgive you for that. Just You know what? I wouldn't like go out of my way to kill you, but you'd just be dead to me. That's all. <laughs> yeah, and don't <laughs> as we as we continuously keep talking about like the certain traits of Ragnar that each one of the kids have. Yes. I feel like Uba's got the character trait of Ragnar where he might be upset and he and he might be resentful, but he always forgave. Like he always forgave everyone mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, like he, he always brought Floki back. Rolo. Like he, Rolo got numerous Rolo. opportunities. So it, it's, I could definitely, Rolo. I could definitely see Uba being like, yeah, I'm mad and I'm sad. I'm going to think about it. And I'm not going to forget this, but okay. Like let's, let, let's team back up and let's go kill this fucker. Like I could totally see him being like that because that's, that's how Ragnar was. Like this, despite being betrayed numerous times by people really close to him, he was always kind of willing you know, to give people to bring another them, chance. Yeah, so yeah. I could see that happening. But Uba is back at Katagad, and he made an alliance with the woman who killed his mama. Well, I mean, he... I don't know if he's fully made the alliance yet. I mean, it... it, it we've seen this happen many, many times before where you join an alliance with someone you hate and want to kill to get a certain goal out of the way. Mm -hmm. Once that, like, goal and mission is done... Then it's like, okay, I'm going to focus on this. Yeah. So, like, we've seen that many times. Like, there have been many people who have wanted to kill Ragnar, but they always partner up with him and go raid. So, it's like, I, I could see, you know, Uba being okay with it for right now. And then when the time comes, if he needs to take out, right, you know, because Lagatha, you're, he will. You still have the thought that it's going to be Uba who... I do. You know, after Marguerite basically was just like, you need to be the ruler, not Bjorn. It's like, I feel like that thought kind of got put in his brain. And I think he kind of liked the sound of it. But I don't know. Like, he's he's a hard one to read sometimes. And I think that also might be a character trait of Ragnar that he's got. Because yeah. you never really know what's going on. And the wheels are always kind of turning. But yeah, like as of right now, I feel like he's he's the betting favorite for the for the son of Ragnar to kill her at this point. So it's possible. interesting. Very interesting. Floki who has flown off the rocker, <laughs> has well, decided... Well, I mean, I... 
Ew. I mean, he's and seeing he, some crazy things. He, he's he's dealing with some stuff, and he should be because like I don't know if it's like fruit or or if he's like whatever it is he's eating. It's very small amount. We haven't seen him hunt anything, and he's barely drinking. So he's got to be going through some shit. But he's at this new land. And he doesn't think he should be there by himself now, and he wants to share it with other people. So he's back in his boat. He's going to take off. We'll see where he goes. We'll see who he brings back. But Floki, Floki is so interesting. I, I, I'm just so fascinated by him and his journey that he's about to go on. Because mm -hmm. same. Yeah, this whole this whole thing is just it, it's taking an interesting turn with him. Because now he's essentially just like a castaway he's on his own he's just doing his own thing but we continuously talk about how fascinating floki is and and really really curious to see where that journey takes him because you know we love floki he's great and bjorn has made his way to sicily and now he's on his way to africa because he's you know he's he's on an adventure it, it's a I, he wants to meet the main commander yeah fuck this guy right who's pretending we need to get to the main dude. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not super invested in him currently, just because I feel like these other storylines are just so much more powerful and interesting. To right now, like I'm still very curious to see where this adventure takes him. It's pretty interesting, and he's traveling around with Hafton, and, and Hafton left a little mark when he was in, in the rock in, in Sicily, and apparently it's a really famous thing. Y'all were letting us know. Really, really cool stuff that... It was pretty obvious that it was important the way they, they punched it yeah, and like, they focused kept, on it. So yeah. the first the first official graffiti, is, is that is that the case? That's pretty cool. It was a really nifty design that he made. So really... Nifty. Re yeah, it was nifty. Nifty. Very nifty design. I'm going to need a shirt. Nifty. Yeah. It was cool. Very cool. So yeah, this has been a very interesting start to season five. Do you have any other thoughts before we jump into this episode? No, super fast talker. Let's go. <laughs> Father. Yep. Mm-hmm. 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 So that's the sewer, correct? Ew. Ew. <laughs> and a final ew. But they don't do anything to the people that are coming up. Wouldn't you then just, just kill those attacking. people? Yeah, start attacking them. Like, literally, they just kind of stood there, like, in shock. I think mean, they were in shock. Like, bitch, get the, get the slices. Shit. Oh, he's got some throwing knives? That's dope. Oh! Get every soul! Be subject to a higher power! But there is no power! But not of God! Oh shit! I mean, this is kind of Aethelwolf's fault because he didn't want to listen to Heedman's full plan and be patient. Should have waited a little longer. Oh, oh shit! Like a Freaking watermelon. A lot of splashage going on. Oh, shit. Ooh, this, what a, oh, come on. That would have been a great fight. Dude. Oh. Oh, shit. Oh. Wow. Oh! <laughs> oh! Run, kid! That's a big ass hammer. <laughs> oh god! Oh. Oh. It's just... oh! Oh! Shit! You can't even root for a particular side. You're just rooting for a specific person at this point. Oh shit! <gasps> oh! Damn, dude. That, sh that fool was fucking intense. Holy oh, shit. That 
was like WWE oh, for shit. a second there. Yeah, it came flying out of nowhere. Oh, oh shit. All right. <laughs> Oh shit! Oh damn! Oh my god! He's like, you see this? You see this? No, I don't want to see this. Oh, I don't want to see that. Come on, bitch! Hi, Toyo Bias! Oh shit! Give the horde no rest in it. Why? And the rough make the decapitals and squeeze while some gold can can my rear by us. What the fuck? Look at how fucking confused he is. He's like, wait, what? Dude, the friggin' fight scenes this season have been off the chain. Yes. By the way, Ivar's hair. Dope ass. I want to know who his barber is. Honestly, th those lines. <laughs> that cut is smooth. That shit is clean. Oh, oh shit. God. Dirt. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, oh my God. Man. Just casually cutting Cody's arm off. And then that comes crawling up. Shit, no. Dude. Hell no. He is such a scary ass motherfucker. When he do that, I can't even speak. The word, ah, dude, that would haunt my dreams. Ivar's crazy ass. Fuck yeah. Crawling up to you. He's got those Hell eyes no. that look yes, like. Yes, that smile that just Satan from within. I mean, just the fact that nothing, like, he gets excited when shit gets turned up. Totes. North Menira. Saifit, welcome near ya mir. Welcome near a Ethe Merkina. Du er bjern jaren sida. Prakt fer vit. Wow. Oh, oh shit. He made it back, no problem. I didn't. I couldn't even tell it was him. Uh, well, he shows up like a fucking boss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Floki, I never thought I'd see you again. Not in this lifetime, anyway. It's strange for me too to be back here in this great hall. If I listen carefully, I can still hear the sound of Earl Haraldson's voice and Ragnar's voice. Always Ragnar's voice. He took me to a place, a special place. I was dead, and then I was alive. I came ashore, and I was in this special place. Where was this place? At the edge of everything, and yet at the very center of it all. There's no one else there. No one? No humans, only the gods. What the fuck? I want to share it with those who believe in the true gods. 
I only want those who are pure in spirit and heart. You would take these warriors and shield maidens away from here to your special place? Yes. They think he's crazy. I must warn you, my friend. I will Kattegat. And I must protect it and look after it and its people. Uh-oh. Last thing I need. He mustn't try to do it, Floki. I forbid you. Do you understand? Uh, this just got hostile. I think Edge was in the background. WWE the, fans. The rated R superstar. People were warning me of somebody that I would geek out. About. Emil has sent you both a gift. Check those chicks for knives. Seriously. Just saying. Enjoy. <laughs> A lot of vulnerable people right now. Um. What did he find? Did he find something he wasn't? He didn't think you would find? How was your evening? Very satisfactory. He doesn't look so satisfied. And yours? She was not a she. What? <laughs> you heard. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, was that a problem for you? The face. I'm starving. <laughs> Bjorn's facial expressions are hilarious. Uh, awkward. <laughs> <laughs> this land has no wars. Blessed by the gods in every way. It seems too good to be true. The gods meant it for us. The climate is good. The earth rich. Yes, my friend. Yeah. It fucking is. It's totally him. How come we have never found this place before? Because the gods were waiting for the right people to find it. I mean, it almost sounds like he's trying to build a cult, but, you know. The sex and army. We must look to Kattegat. What if Uber kills Lekatha? Or persuades her to crown him king? The loss of our home base would be a devastating blow. Mm. We need to sort things out. We must kill Uber and Lekatha. Oh, shit. And you must be crowned king of Kattegat. You are making more and more sense, my brother. And what of our prisoner? He seems like an important man. We could offer him back to the Saxons for a great ransom. Or we could crucify him. That would be fun. Shit. That would be fun. <laughs> Dude, this fucking guy. Oh, God. You call me a heathen, but to me, I am godly. I live by the gods. There is only one god. But I have seen other gods. They are the devil's work. He conjures up demons and fallen angels to beguile us and lead us into evil. What is evil? Slaughter of the innocent. You slaughter when it suits you. He who chooses to be heathen is not innocent. But I could show you the ways of God. I could bring you to salvation and to eternal life. <laughs> Do you know who I am? Oh, bitch. He just hit him with the you know who I am. You are Ifa, son of Ragnar Lothbrok. And many there are who fear you. People tell stories about other people, people they don't know. And yet they still curse them and tell lies about them. I love this. People tell lies about our savior. Well, perhaps they tell lies about me as well. What's the music? How would I know? <laughs> I will give you the chance to find out. You are coming on a journey with us. He's gonna take him with them. Yeah. What a fascinating interaction. Yeah. Welcome, what has happened? From what I can That's gather, Commander Euphemius was placed under arrest last night, but somehow managed to escape. And it was their fault. What are you, Euphemius? Shit. <laughs> Since she was so good to Ivo when he was younger, you should know that he and I have fallen out. 
I think it is more likely that one day we will go to war against each other. Do you really believe you have found the land of the gods? Why would I lie to you, Ben? Because you're insane. <laughs> <laughs> Am I? <laughs> yeah. Yep. You're a little crazy. I love that statement because you're insane. <laughs> Get old Uncle Floki. Lina Talimatan. Anta daiman ala khata. Lina tawakkal ala Allah. Oh shit. Ribs? <coughs> oh no, 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 no. I don't uh, know if I can look at ribs the same way now. Nah, fuck no. Nope. We're good. Mm. What's cool? Oh God. I you. Or I can cast the opposite fellow there. He is you. I left her your men. I left her your apple to tell us to turn. For all law, I met a lover man, this sarcastic. Oh no. He's saying that we've all just eaten Commander Euphemius. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Oh, I discovered I that same. Euphemius was trying to double cross me and return to the Emperor's favor. Now that was unacceptable. Yikes. He looks real mad. Like, real mad. I think we should return to the boats. We are in the greatest danger. Is it a teller? No. Cassia. Fuck, dude. <laughs> Here are the chosen ones. You four will be responsible for preparing all the families for the voyage. But do it carefully and with utter secrecy. I shall go back to my boat yard and prepare the boats. You will all meet me there in nine days' time. The risks are high. Nothing can be achieved without taking risks. The gods will take care of us. Um, that didn't look... That looked... Are they working against Floki? That's, thank you. I can't verbalize it. What? What are we gonna do? Oh, fuck. There's a storm coming. If we can stay alive a few moments longer. Too late. No! Oh, shit, dude. The fucking cliffhangers this season. <sighs> Give me a break, yo. Oh my god, please. Can we watch another one? <laughs> Holy crap, man. Oh my god. The way they keep leaving us hanging. Not cool. This. Oh, fuck. The dude, like, he literally had his, like, swipe back. Mm hmm. That's some Killed bullshit. Killed him. Too late. That's some bullshit right there. Nah. -uh. <laughs> That's some bullshit right there. I mean, they are excellent warriors. They ain't getting their head sliced off right now. Maybe, maybe what's his name, Will? Captain. <laughs> no. Said. Yeah. Said, yeah. I, I don't think Bjorn or Hafton is, is down. I think they'll be fine. <laughs> I feel <laughs> I, I feel good about them surviving that moment. Uh, I'm worried. Unless I mean they might just pick up in the next episode where their heads getting sliced off. Fuck that shit. I I feel pretty good about them surviving that. I, I'm nervous. They're really really good fighters. <laughs> they are. Like, but how do you get out of that? There's a fucking sandstorm coming and there's blades at their throat. And duck. Ca Cassio is just like kill them. Duck, come up. Grab the sword, take it from them, stab them. Or, like that dude... Like Bjorn did when they showed up. Well, you remember when the guy, you know... Yeah, just hold my hair. Oh, yeah. Boom. Yeah, that was... <laughs> like that you brought that up. That was that was <laughs> fucking amazing. That was amazing. You didn't think I remembered that. Yeah. I that remembered that part. <laughs> that, man, this journey has... It, it turned bad 
quick for them. Like it just the, <laughs> they're just like, they, oh shit. They weren't doing a good job of being bodyguards because well, they ended up eating the guy they were supposed okay, to protect. Okay, but they were being distracted. <laughs> right. With. Company. That's why they were. That's why they were vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah, they. But again, they did a very poor job of being bodyguards because they ate the guy they were supposed to be protecting. That's so nasty. Oh. I, you know, I'm sure it tastes like chicken. I mean, it looked like they were enjoying it up until they found out exactly what it was, so. Yeah, man, I never really get ribs the same way. Just overcook it, and it'll, you know. It, it takes the human out of it? <laughs> I couldn't tell. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. I don't fly with cannibalism, so I'm good. I don't know. That, that's. You do you, boo. That's pretty intense. But speaking of intense, holy shit, Ivar, this guy, I, I don't know, I, I really didn't know what to expect, what this show was going to like focus on when, when the one and only Ragnar Lovebrook <laughs> was no longer on this show. But the elevation of Ivar as a character and being essentially the centerpiece now of this show, fantastic. Absolutely. I mean, he's no, he's no Ragnar. But he's I'm like he's he's like on the in terms of in terms level. of intrigue, yeah. like he is definitely up there because it's just like I just want to see what this dude's gonna do next. I have like I, I just want the next plan yeah, and like, the next plan. I just want to like uh, what's the next scene like just his interactions with people, just the the way he's going through these fights and these battles. It's just every moment, even conversations with his brother. It's like. What are you going to do? I'm so fascinated to see what he does next in every scene because he's so unpredictable. Well, it sounds like they're going to Ketiket to yeah. kill Ube and Lagatha. Fuck. So now it may not be Ube who kills Lagatha. It may it be, be Ivar the, or Sitzer. The line has moved. It is back to, to Ivar being the betting favorite on who kills, who kills Lagatha. Can we not? But he's... And he's going over there to go go create an alliance with with King Finehair. So we've got Finehair, Ivar, and that crew, and we got Lagatha and Uba, and that crew. We're gonna have another fucking Viking on Viking civil war shit going on here. Viking on Viking. It's gotta it's stop. Too much Viking on Viking crime. Damn it! Stop killing each other. But shit, they're all. They're all thirsting for the same shit. They all want to be in charge. They all want rule. They all want power. Like, they just thrive on it. And they just want it. And they just desire it. And it's like... And now Lagatha is, like, dealing with, like... Floki made his way back. And he's she's dealing with him because he wants to take people away. But they all think he's insane. Yeah. Like, he, the way he... Like, he's talking in... Like, he's always kind of spoken in, like, riddle form. But now I feel like it's just... Cuckoo land riddles, just like, dude, you're not making any sense to anybody who has not seen what you've, like... Okay, but now he has, like, this small group, but two of the dudes, yeah. Edge included... <laughs> the Red R Superstar! Let's go! Do we roll the eyes again? Did you know he was an actor? Well, I know that he played in, like, stuff on the USA yeah, Network. Yeah, so he's an actor. Like, he's an actor now. Post-WWE retirement because he, well now like, he's legit well, i don't know now nah. i mean like i don't know what he's doing right now yeah, but he's like doing stuff. this is legit yeah it's dope that he's on viking i mean he fits he totally fits he looks like a fucking viking yeah it totally works i'm down for like, that he, he fits but, in perfectly but it, it almost feels like him i didn't they didn't put their names no but like it almost feels like him and that other dude are like planted by lag yeah that, for like, sure the way they gave themselves that keep look keep an eye yeah. on that bullshit for I don't sure know, I don't so know. now they'll probably go back and lag it they'll be like hey they're planning to meet at floki's place in nine days and blah 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 totes yeah so floki uh, i mean i get lack of stance on that that she's got a community to rule and protect and all these people and everything but it's floki like is he really that much of a danger to you like if he takes like five people with him, is it you know, really like, gonna? What's the big deal? Is it gonna like? If they want to go, 
Let him go. Yeah, I feel like she's... Why are you holding back these people's, you know, goals, ambitions, and life? Right. She's definitely taking her rule to, like, a level of just, like, uh, you're kind of being a, becoming a dictator if no one's allowed to do anything. Mm -hmm. I get that you don't want people talking shit about you. That's fair. But, like, if, if people, like, what if someone wanted to leave Katika and go live somewhere else like you did? Like, well, I mean, she kind of was. She kind of had to leave. I mean, she didn't way. have to do anything. Like, she could have stayed there and been married to Ragnar and let Ragnar have a side piece. Like, that's not rare. Asok that... didn't want to be a side piece. She wanted to be I the know. whole piece. But still, like in that world, that's not the most absurd thing ever. No. So like, she left and went to go live somewhere. So it's like, if if people are presented an opportunity, which she was. Why not allow them? Like she's not. He's not taking the army. Like he's not taking every soldier and warrior they have. No, it's I'm, a very small group. So I don't know. I wonder if Ragnar could have told Lagatha, "You're not allowed to leave. You're not allowed to divorce me. You're not allowed to leave." I mean, that's not his style. No, it's totally you not. Know? You want to leave? Leave. Yeah, but I, I I'm, I'm kind of torn on that whole thing because again Lagatha is one of those characters she's been with us with this from the start she's a total badass she's an amazing character but she's been making some kind of interesting questionable decisions yeah. lately as annoying and irritating as Marguerite might be like she might actually kind of be onto something like well, in terms yeah. of her like decision like her decision like questioning whether the gods are supporting oh, her shit. or not are we it's talking like, shit behind Lagatha's back right I I don't know. Can she hear us? We no. I, I better never, be prepared to say it to her face. I would totally say it to her face. Just don't stab me in the eye or anything. Um, but yeah, like it, it does kind of feel like she's kind of losing her grip, not making the best. This, like, I mean, fine hair totally punked her. Well, like, I do. I, she's definitely losing her grip, but she's like trying to like. Right. She's trying she's, to keep it. She's overcompensating with how much she's trying to rule. I feel like totally. Like, the fact that she would... If Floki came in being like, I need everyone to come with me, we're all leaving, then yeah, that would probably be like, whoa, dude. Pump your brakes. Like, chill. He just wants to take a small percentage of, of people that, that he believe are, like, on his level in terms of love for the gods. So it, it, it's interesting. I, I'm, I'm, I want to see how it plays out, because she obviously has a couple plants in there, and she's obviously going to find out what's going down. And mm -hmm. I mean, we could be she, totally wrong. Edge could be looking at the other dude just like, Ooh, this yeah, sounds let's, fun. <laughs> yeah, let's pack up our shit and get yeah, the fuck I didn't, out of here. I didn't get that vibe. I got I got the vibe that they were spying. So, I don't know. We'll see where that goes. I hope it doesn't lead to Lagatha like, feeling like Floki betrayed her and her deciding to kill him. Because that, no, that would suck. Man. Yeah, that would really suck. But that, that's an interesting situation. So, yeah, like seeing where that storyline goes and, and how it all plays out, it's, it's all very interesting. This season... I said it last episode, I'm going to say it again. This season has started off friggin' hot. Like, it is intense. The war and the fight scenes have just been so insane. They definitely, they definitely turned it up a notch this season totally. in terms of, like, the blood and gore and just the violence. Mm -hmm. it, it's been pretty crazy. So do you have any other thoughts? No. All right, y'all. Leave some comments down below. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. We'll catch y'all later. Have a good one. Bye.